Now, residents in 10 African countries will not have universal access to electricity, drinking water or sanitation unless 2.4 trillion US dollars is invested in infrastructure by the year 2040. Now, those figures are according to a new study that's been released today by the Global Infrastructure Hub. This is a G20-backed organization. So as far as those, those countries go, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, Ethiopia, Senegal, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Benin and Rwanda all run the risk of slowing down their economies if they don't review and receive new infrastructure. However, Ethiopia has the largest infrastructure investment gap of 362 billion US dollars. Now, all this is despite a massive construction project that's being built. It's the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. It's Africa's biggest hydroelectric power station. Meanwhile, Benin has the smallest infrastructure investment gap in the group. Okay, let's take a closer look at the reasons behind this. Joining me now is Kwame Owino from the Institute of Economic Affairs in Kenya. Thank you for joining us here on Focus on Africa. So where will the money come from? Oh, well, it's clear that I mean, uh, $2.4 trillion is a huge amount of money anywhere in the world. And if you think about these countries, and specifically in Africa, uh, it's clear it's several times what their national income per year is. So one thing that is evident is that not all this money is going to come from government sources. I think some of it will have to come from, um, I mean, exciting investment, or rather providing an opportunity for, for new investment to come in from other parts of the world, um, in addition to local savings as well. But it's clear that uh, it's quite a huge amount of money and it's not possible for these governments, given their present growth rates and the sizes of their economy, to, to afford. I was just going to say, it sounds like something of a, a, a wish list. I mean, how realistic are these targets? Are they, are they achievable? No, it's clearly not, right? Because if you put all these countries together, I mean, the amount of money that's required for these 10 alone and all the others tells you that it's already bigger than Africa's GDP per year by a huge amount. So uh, in a way, it's asking for, I think, uh, um, one of the things that would have to happen is a scaling down of the projects and to choose the most cost effective and the ones that are most affordable. So they may have to put together something like a least cost plan, which allows them to put together the ones, I mean, to, to invest in the ones that will generate the most income or rather the most uh, welfare for the lowest cost. So definitely a prioritization is required. And Kwame, quite, what, uh, Kwame what's actually gone wrong? What's gone wrong? Um, because the money has been flowing into the countries. We've been talking about infrastructure. Where's it all gone wrong? Well, I think it's different for every one of these countries. Let's start with Ethiopia, which has the biggest deficit. Ethiopia is a very big country, and it's also quite, uh, I mean, uh, topographically uh, very, very different. So building infrastructure in a country like that obviously has its own challenges. So that's the first. The second is just a legacy of poor growth for almost 20, 30 years that African countries have had. So in 30 years, uh, low growth rates and poor investment in infrastructure, at the same time that many of them had, um, were not very, very open economies that would allow for private sector to supplement government funds. So they are all opening up at this time. The, the deficit is huge, and it's clear that it cannot be covered uh, in a shorter time. So one of the things is fast, I think, slow growth and the sizes of this economy. On the other side, I think the, this infrastructure um, ambition was, I mean, this infrastructure list is actually quite ambitious. Kwame, can I just jump in really quickly? Um, we're looking at examples of Benin, Rwanda. Um, wh what are they doing right? Is, does it come down to good governance in these countries? Because they have shown a notable improvement. Certainly. I mean, it, it depends. I mean, a part of uh, rolling out infrastructure is the competence of government in terms of taking a plan and being able to roll it out, uh, limiting corruption. Because I think when you're talking about these big sums of money, uh, it's clear that uh, if you do not have very strict laws but also procedures, then some of that money could leak. So being able to actually run a clean government in relative terms, of course, uh, means that, yes, you're able to reach and cover that gap much better than others. So okay. it's clear for... Rwanda in specifically, I mean Rwanda specifically and, and, and Benin, uh, improvements in political management are part of their success. Kwame Owino in Nairobi, thank you for your time.